Welcome to Module 5, Lesson 21, Why Worry About Sampling Variability? Probably should put a question mark at the end of that. Yes, why worry about um, sampling variability? Well, um, let's see. This uh, lesson, I guess, will attempt to answer that question, although I am not certain it will do that completely. Um, this is the first of three lessons. In, uh, in our topic D, in which you guys are going to be asked to compare the means of two populations, okay? So you're going to um, you know, consider random samples from two different populations um, that have the same mean. Um, your variability, sampling variability must be considered when uh, deciding if there is evidence that the two population means are actually the, actually the same or different, and we're going to um, pick from three different bags, well, whatever, maybe not pick, but um, we'll pick from three different bags. Um, if you feel like setting yourself up with those three bags, that is, um, <clears throat> that is up to you. Um, if not, you could just, again, as always, just follow, follow up with me. Um, yes, so um, firstly, we are going to start with... Um, an exercise here, actually. Um, no, we're not going to start with anything else. We're going to get right to it, okay? Get right to it um, because we want to get this over and done with. So here we go. There are three bags. We have bag A, bag B, and bag C, which have a hundred numbers in each bag, okay? Um, again, you and your classmates will investigate the population mean the mean of all 100 numbers in the bag. Okay, so we're going to investigate it. That What that means is we're not actually going to uh, dump out all the numbers, add them all up, and divide by 100. We are going to, of course, choose samples. Okay, choose samples. The idea is to see we um, who can uncover the mystery of the bags. Yes, again, this would all be much more fun in a classroom, but... Um, we will do it here. Um, nonetheless, we'll do as do as well as we can. So here we go. So to begin your investigation, start by selecting a random sample of 10 numbers from bag A, um, which I have done here, which have already populated themselves in that chart, in that table. Um, remember to mix the numbers in the bag first. Okay, so mixing them up. I guess I don't really need to, to read all of this. Okay, um, but again, one um, important point here is... Uh, we're not going to put anything back in the bag. This is not a probability exercise. This is without replacement. Um, and then, um, yeah, if you want to go ahead and do this, you can. Um, I doubt you want to. But anyway, I um, have done that already, and here's what I picked. Okay, if I go ahead and create my dot plot, here is what that looks like. Okay, here's my dot plot. Um, I have decided on those um, those numbers and that spacing there based on the the um, the numbers I picked. Okay, because I saw my my smallest number was five, my largest was twenty two. I wanted to keep it by twos so I could put all the um, even numbers and I mean the odd numbers in the middle places like right over there. Okay, I wanted it to be relatively clean, but I don't want it to be all clumpy with numbers right on top of each other. So I did that. And again, that is quite the skill itself, actually, um, getting that right. So um, here we go. And I went ahead and populated it with my dots. Okay, so I made my dot plot of my first random sample of 10 numbers out of bag A. Okay, we are working with bag a right now. Okay, and there you go. So um, here are some questions, and again, you can just answer these or follow along based on what I have pulled out of my bag. Um, you may want to do this on your own, and again, these are really interesting things to do simply because um, it's just um, it's fun when you have the more, like they say, the more the merrier, the more samples you have, um, the more interesting it all becomes, and you can see the imperfection of uh, statistics um, firsthand. Anyway, so if we answer this question, do you think the mean of all the numbers 
and bag A might be 10? Why or why not? I'm not sure why they asked that question, okay? I'm not sure why they have chosen 10. But based on my sample, um, the mean being 10, probably not. The number that is actually in the middle of this whole thing is um, probably, what, 12, 15? Maybe 15 is 11 more than that. No, some, actually 12, right? 12 is 10 less than that. No, it's actually 13. Yeah, 13 is actually the very center of this. Uh, 13, and there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, there's 6 values on this side of 13, and 4 values here. So probably going to be more like 14 or so. I, I'm just, just, just eyeballing it here. I'm trying to find the... I'm trying, actually, I'm trying to locate the median, really. Um, and uh, just, a, just a guess. And I would say no, it's not... It's not going to be, um, I'm going to say it's not going to be 10. I'm not sure what, why they're interested in 10, but I'm going to say no and why or why not. Um, well, you can see why or why not. I've kind of explained that already, all right? Um, but based on the dot plot, what would you estimate the mean of the number in the bag A to B? How did you make your estimate? And again, I just mentioned that I thought it was probably closer. It's between, I would like to say between 13 and 14. That's just based on my dot plot. And again, the way I, I got that was just by um, finding the middle of this whole range here, because this whole range here is, what, about 18 numbers numbers wide. Um, trying to find it, and I know the number 13 is actually um, 9 away from 4 and 9 away from 22. So it kind of works really well to be the middle. Um, and I have, you know, six values to the to the right of 13, but only four here. So I'd want to say it was a little bit higher. Um, actually, I'd say it's even closer to 14. I'm going to say it's 14. So last question here is, do you think the sample mean will be close to the population mean? Why or why not? Okay, oh man. The population is actually 100 pieces of paper. Okay, there's 100 pieces of paper in this bag. I've picked out 10. Is it going to be close? Er it's a kind of a hard, it's just, I don't know, these, sometimes these questions are just a little, a little too stupid for me. Um, I don't know. Maybe yes, maybe no. I don't know. Um, I'm going to say, I'm just going to go for it and say yes. Sure. Yeah, I got it right on the, the mark. Okay, so here we go. Um, here is our next thing. Um, they asked this last question. Is your sample mean the same as your neighbor's sample means? Well, you guys aren't doing it, but if you did pull out of, uh, pull this out of the bag, and actually you can't just put the numbers 1 to 100 because it's not the numbers 1 to 100. I'm sorry, I thought I didn't, I didn't make that very clear, but there are 100 numbers, but they're not necessarily um, 1 to 100. There could be several of one and several of the other. Well, I guess that's pretty obvious that there are multiples, as you saw, there were two 22s and there were two fives in this, that, that first, uh, the bag A sample, okay. Anywho, oh, didn't want to do that, do want to do this, and, um, okay, so again, I pulled another, I pulled a sample out of bag B, okay, here is bag B, all right, and we're going to go ahead and just like we did before, create the dot plot, there she is, um, done in similar, well, hold on a second, yes, I, actually, that's right, I made a new one, because I have new values, all right, so now my dot plot looks like this, ranges from 8 to 24, and again, by twos, and the reason I did that is my lesser value was uh, 8, and my larger value was 23, and trying to keep it, um, uh, keep it nice and neat, all right, so if I go ahead and dot plot it, there we go. Now that dot plot is from B. We're going to look at these um, together, um, actually all of them. Once I do bag C, we'll look at all three right on top of each other using a similar scale so that it's a, a fair and reasonable uh, look. Um, but based on this dot plot, do you think the mean of the numbers in bag B is the same or different? from that in bag 
A. Okay, so if I go back and take a look at bag B dot plot, you see a um, you know kind of a a clustering on this side, and then over here, you don't see much in the middle. Um, so how's that compare to this? Well, it doesn't look much the same at all. Look at our range, our variability. We go from we'll go from five to twenty-two. This goes from eight to twenty-three. That's not drastically different, but they look very they look awful different to me because I do see I do see six you know a little clumping there, sixteen seventeen. Okay. Um, in terms of the mean, if I looked at that and kind of do the same thing as I did last time, between 8 and 24, where there are 16 different values, and so where's that going to put us? Probably about, so 15 is 7 and 9, now 16 is actually about 8 away from both of those. So this would be the middle right there of this, so 16. So based on this, I would say it would be different. Um, this one looks like it would actually be probably about 16 as the mean from bag B, but that doesn't mean much uh, simply because these are random samples we're talking about. I mean, they could be the same exact uh, numbers inside of the both bags for all we know um, because, again, we are talking randomly. Oops, didn't want to do that. Did want to do that, kind of. That... I'm going to cut to the chase, though, and get back to that. Okay, so I went ahead and did that. I, um, we're going to go ahead and repeat the process once more here, and I went ahead and selected a random sample from bag C. And if we go ahead and create our dot plot, again, you can see this be a race. It's going to be changed because I'm going to adjust it for bag C. And there we go. So that's what it looks like for bag C. Um, you see it's going to range... Um, from uh, probably will be the lowest of well, the lowest value here that we've had yet. Let's just go ahead and populate it. And there is our dot plot. Okay, our dot plot. Again, these are different scales. Um, they all go by two, but you know, whereas this one starts at two here, and we have two there. This one starts at eight. The other one. Um, oops. No. Yes. That one. Um, and then our other, um, let's take a look at our other one, and that started at 5. Okay, so they're, they're different. Again, we're talking random. Um, but let's answer this question. So based on your dot plot here, or this dot plot, do you think the mean of the numbers in bag C is the same or different from bag A? Okay, from bag A. Well, I mean, if we look at this, it looks really, really spread out. I mean, I'm not sure with that means the variability seems it's a lot seems a lot greater 19 there versus two 19s and two twos in terms of this sample well if we look at um, if we look at that middle value again um, between 2 and 20 that's 18 that's 9 so the middle value is probably 11 right here okay so one two three four look at that there's five on each side of 11 so based on that we would look at we're looking at a a mean of 11, which is, um, is, yeah, is different, we'll say. So uh, based on that, based on these dot plots, we're going we're gonna, to um, say that uh, they are, they're different. Those means are different. Um, do we know this? We don't. Okay, so here we are. We're going to look at these stacked up on top of each other. Okay, and we have a similar scale now that runs from 2 to 22. All right, so here are our dot plots, one on top of the other. Let's, ask, let's answer some questions about these here. So again, if we look at the center point, um, we found the, the center of, um, of this one here, probably about, um, what would we say, about 14, oops, yeah, about 14 here. This, um, the second one we looked at, we thought it was, more, more like 16, 16 here, around there. And then here we looked at, it was more like, one, two, three, four, five, we said it was about, it's about 11. Okay, so you can see where these central points, so looking at it, you know, I have, um, there we go, ABC. 
So looking at it here, it looks like A and B from this from this perusal of this these dot plots stacked, um, it would seem that A and B are more likely. Again, this is just these are just samples of ten um, are more likely to be uh, be similar the contents of those two bags than C. Again, with a very small small sample size. Oh, another question we didn't answer here. So, I mean, if you did these, let's say you did, would you think that your dot plots from the bags A and B or the dot plots from all those bags would be similar um, to other students? Actually, let's say it says the same, okay? Um, probably not, okay? So not the same, but maybe similar, okay? So not the same because they're random. Not the same, exactly the same. That is a very, very rare occurrence. Um, probably similar. Okay, um, similar. They may be similar to mine that I picked, but again, but they could be very, they could be very different. All right. Again, statistics. That's the name of the game. All right. So we're going to go ahead, and um, I'd like you to do this if you if you could. You can maybe reverse, or um, I could uh, go back to those back to those numbers. Uh, calculate the mean of the numbers for each of the sample bags from A, bag A, bag B, and bag C. So what I'll do is let me just go back. Um, yeah, let's go back here. Okay, so go ahead and uh, look at that, and you notice you can see where these these are. You know, these are these are twos here. Okay, that is a five. These are all fives. You can see how how it works. So if you go ahead, and find out your mean um, of bag A, bag B, and bag C, and uh, and come on back. Okay, so. Uh, Here's what I got, and hopefully you got the same. Uh, the mean in bag A was 15.4, 16.2 for bag B, and then 10.2 for bag C. And if we go look here, um, let's see again, what was that? 15.4, so it was actually a little bit uh, further over here. How about it was right here? Okay, and um, what else was 16.2? We're really close to that one, okay, really darn close thinking that. And then it was, what, 10.2, um, which again was, was pretty darn close. So uh, we came close in our estimate just by eyeballing the dots on the plots. And, um, yeah, and the actuals were, were really darn close. So, um, and here are the sample, the question here is, are the sample means you calculated the same um, as other members of your class? Um, of course, they're not, again, the same, same answer to this question. You know, not the same, probably similar, but maybe not, okay? <laughs> there you go. That uh, kind of sums it up again. Um, so how do uh, the samples for the means for bag A and bag B compare? Okay, and again, if you're doing this yourself, you may have different answers, but we're just, I'm just basing this off of the data that I am, I am um, recording here. And you can look at it, 15.4 and 16.2, uh, very similar, okay? So I'm going to say similar, you know, similar enough um, to get us thinking like maybe the, the contents of those two bags are, are the same, okay? Because there are, again, two of these bags have the exact same contents in them, and one has different, different contents, okay? <clears throat> but all 100 um, separate slips of paper. Okay, so here now in this um, this part C here, you're going to go ahead and calculate the difference of the sample mean for bag A minus the sample mean for bag B. You can see what that what that um, calculation looks like. It's not much of a calculation, of course. Um, so based on the difference, we're going to ask this question: um, Can you be sure which bag is has the larger population mean? Uh, why or why not? Okay, so if we go ahead and take those two, so the mean of A is 15.4, and if we subtract the mean of B, which is 16.2, okay, we get uh, negative 0 0.8. Okay, so this is our um, the difference in the means uh, between bag A and bag B. Now what we need to think about is that difference, 
um, large enough or um, or small enough to um, for us to tell which um, bag has the larger population mean. You know, and again, of course, this is statistics, and of course, the answer is no. Okay, there is there is no way to tell because you can do this again and maybe get a population mean of uh, 12.8 for A and then 18.2 for B and throws the whole thing, you know, now we're looking at almost like six point difference, okay? So, um, yeah, no, no, we, we can't do that again. Our sample size is too small for us to make any, um, come to any kind of conclusions or any, any kind of inferences in that way. So based on the number of class dot plots of sample means, do you think the means, mean of the numbers of bag A and the mean of numbers in bag B are different? Okay, so do you think the mean of the, the numbers in bag A and the mean of the numbers in bag C are different? Explain your answers. Okay, so um, we are going to go ahead and work, work this out now. Okay, so here are a, um, again, this is from a fictitional or fictitious uh, class of 30 uh, seventh graders. And, you know, these were, of course, drawn by someone who actually did this. So I feel a little bit more comfortable about that, not just uh, dots thrown around. Um, my dots are not in the entirely correct places, though. Sorry. Very tedious work indeed. Anyway, <clears throat> you can see um, when we look at the means of, um, now these are the means of samples from bag A. So each one of these dots is one person's mean for um, uh, their, their 20 uh, samples, so tw no, 10 samples, 10 numbers that they pulled out. Okay, so um, you can see these are all on the same scale. So they are markedly different. Um, boy, just by looking at these, you can, um, you can see that, um, bag A and bag B, uh, having a very similar clustering in this area here, as you can see, uh, whereas bag, bag C is definitely much more shifted to the left. It's kind of clumping, um, in this area right here, okay? Um, other things to ask um, include, so based on the difference, um, the sample mean of bag A, between the sample mean of bag A and, and bag B, which we saw was um, a negative 0 0.8, okay, and um, looking at that, this, um, this here, the, um, these plots, um, all together, um, do you think that um, these two populations have different means, or do you think that these two population means might be the same? And again, like I had mentioned here, just you know, due to this clustering, and look at these ranges are just about the same. You know, they they cluster between 11 and you know, a little bit over 16. Uh, well, actually, that's their range. They kind of cluster more or less in the same area. That's like about 15 something and this is a little bit closer to closer to 16. So I would say my prediction would be that they are the same. I would say A and B are the two bags that are the same. Okay. Um, now based on the difference, and they're talking about this difference here, can you be sure which bag has a larger population mean? Why or why not? Well, you still can't, okay, just because that could be, you know, could be very, very different. Um, each time, all right? Um, is your difference in sample means the same as your neighbor's differences? Why or why not? And um, no, um, of course, they most likely will not will not be, but again, you have no neighbor to compare to right there, okay? So now um, we can go ahead and now we can plot, so we can plot the, um, the differences of the means on a class dot plot, okay? Okay, so using the data from um, these dot plots here, 
Okay, all these dot plots, I wouldn't ask you to do this, find these difference in means between A and B, um, <clears throat> because you actually couldn't, because you're not, we don't really know the actual separate data from each separate student, you know, there are 30 here um, that collected it. So um, I just used that data to go ahead and create this dot plot. Now this dot plot is showing you um, differences in, um, in the means between A and B, okay, and you can see that right here between bag A and bag B. So, you know, this, each one of these, so for example, this one here um, represents that, um, you know, one, one student um, got a mean for A and a mean for B that were exactly the same. There was no difference. But you can see there's quite a range. I mean, someone greater than negative 4.2, and again, this is A minus B, all right, so we have negative and positive values. <clears throat> it's not an absolute value we're using here. So um, negative, you know, more than negative 4.2. And up here, you know, beyond probably what, almost like probably uh, six, you know, could be up there. All right, a difference of plus six, um, difference between uh, bag A, mean from bag A and bag B. Okay, so you can see that's what that dot plot is showing us. Um, so why are the differences in sample means and bag A and bag B if not always zero? Eh, kind of a stupid question, huh, by now for us. Um, that is going to be very rare, and that's, um, again, this is all random. And I guess with a, a one-word answer would be random, okay? Um, we are taking random samples from a pool of uh, 100 different bits of paper with uh, unknown numbers written on them, okay? So it's random. Um, it's not going to be always be always be zero. They're not always the mean of bag A and bag B are not always going to be the same. Um, does a class does a does the class dot plot contain differences that were relatively far away from zero? Okay, and yeah, we had mentioned uh, mentioned those beforehand. We have. These up here, which are nearing, uh, you know, the difference of six, and over here, probably a difference of nearly, you know, like five or a little bit more than five. Okay, so um, why? Why do you think that happened? Again, the one-word answer, or how about how about a three-word answer? It's it's random, man, something like that. What do you think? Um, yeah, and that's pretty much going to be the answer to everything when we're talking about random samples. Um, there is no perfection. We're just trying to get closer and closer to that perfection. All right, but um, yeah, you're going to have that. But as you can see, um, there is some um, agreement or some clustering that goes on here, um, which um, shows that um, the more and more you you get, the more and more you take. Again, you're going to reduce that um, variability with the more samples you actually take. So now suppose you will take a sample from a new bag. How big would the difference in the sample mean for bag A and the sample mean for the new bag? Okay, and there's our, oopsie, wrong one. There is our calculation there. Um, have to be before you would be convinced that the population mean for the new bag is different from the population mean of, of bag A. Use the class dot plot of the differences in sample, sample means for bag A and B, which are equal. We have decided that now. If we have not made that official, it is official um, to help you answer this question. Okay, so what are they asking here exactly? Um, how big would the difference in, in sample mean um, have to be with this new bag? Well, if we look here, um, we can see um, we had a negative 0 0.8, okay, and they were still the same, right? We haven't looked at any other... Um, difference in sample means between A and B, like you guys, maybe you've done one. Well, we looked at them here. We can see all the differences, okay? Um, they vary quite, um, 
you know, quite a bit. Again, a you know, difference here of nearly six, a little bit over five over here. Um, but they are indeed the same. So the truth is they all should be, right, I mean should, I'm going to say should, in a perfect world, um, they would be all right there at zero because they are indeed um, the same. But again, the randomness of it all um, makes it all very, very uh, difficult, okay? Um, you know, they would have to be, probably to answer this question, they'd have to be relatively far away, okay? Relatively far away, because as we will be looking at in a second, if we do look at these, for example, okay? Um, now we're, you know, in a minute we're going to look at bag A, we're going to compare it to bag C. Now you're, you're going, you can see how different these um, means are going to be, okay? The different means between bag A and bag C. And uh, they're going to be, who knows, maybe into the double digits, okay? So um, they have to be pretty big. And the answer to that question, um, uh, let's say pretty big. And again, I don't know what that means exactly. Um, you know, we had, I, I would say more, um, you'd have to be getting a sample difference of maybe more than 10 Okay, to really, um, and getting close to that, you know, um, a couple of times, and you know, before you could say they're different. Well, I didn't turn the uh, record on, and I was talking to myself there for, I don't know, it must have been a few minutes. I'm not really sure if I said any of this before. Forgive me. Anyway, we we're trying to answer this question: How big would this, um, would the difference between uh, the mean of this new bag and the mean of bag A, B, or actually in, in this direction here, mean A minus this new bag. We want to know how, how big would that difference have to be before we were convinced. Again, this word convinced um, is um, just a little dodgy here for me. Again, we're talking about an, an imperfect process right now. Um, how big would it have to be? Well, if you, um, if you look over here at this one, um, you can see the difference, uh, well, the difference in the means, of course, are here for A and B, all right? And you can see we had you know, about 6 here and about you know, negative 5 here, okay? Um, but we still had, um, we still know that A and B had the same exact numbers in them, okay? They were exactly the same. Despite that, you had some you know, reasonably sized differences between the means of uh, the two bags picked by, you know, individual students. Um, you can look at, if we look at this here, we can see that there's going to be a major, that's going to be very much different here when we look at um, bag A and compare it to bag C, which we are, which we are about to do, all right? But in terms of answering that question, it's a, it's a difficult one to ask. So let's just continue on here. So, the differences in the class dot plot occur because of, you know, we know our sampling variability. That's one of our, uh, our key, key points in, in, in this entire um, module. Um, and that is the, you know, the sampling variability is the chance variability from one sub, uh, sample to another, okay? Um, you know, we were asked up here about how great would this uh, difference in sample means need to be before we would have convincing evidence, okay, that one population is, uh, you know, is uh, larger than another. This idea of, again, a convincing evidence. Um, a meaningful difference between the two sample means um, is one that is unlikely to have, occur have occurred by chance, okay? And you're going to see this later on in your statistics world, okay? Um, it's one that is unlikely to have occurred by chance. Um, in other words, the difference is one that is greater than would have been expected just due to sampling variability. Now, we're not going to calculate that in any way here, but there, there are calculations, there are statistical formulas um, that later on will help you get closer and closer to uh, being more precise with all of this, okay? Um, in the meantime, we will just use this difference in means, um, and we're about to go ahead and do that here. So let's go ahead and calculate um, the sample mean of bag A minus the sample mean of bag C, 
like we had talked about. Let's go ahead and do that. Why don't you go ahead and do that and um, uh, come on back if you can you can tell what all the numbers are. And I would use, actually use, um, oh, I guess you could use these. That's pretty, yeah, that's pretty clear. Okay, so go ahead and use those and come on back. Well, I'm sorry if you did more work than you had to because I forgot that we had actually already calculated these uh, these means back back on this page here. So I just went ahead and did um, took 15.4, subtracted away 10.2, came up with a 5.2. So that is my difference in means there, significantly different than my uh, zero negative zero point eight that I had between A and B. Okay, so that um, that is quite big. So let's go ahead and do the same as we did before. Um, plot the difference on a uh, class dot plot, and again the class dot plot is just, um, of course, uh, some data that I'm going to find um, in my teacher's guide here, and I'll come back and show it to you, and um, and we will uh, we'll talk about it. But in the meantime, what you can guess, you could try to, um, what do you think is going to be different about um, this dot plot than um, this one here, okay? This difference in means between A and B, that's what that one looks like. How do you think that was going to compare to this uh, difference between A and C? Okay, so here they are. After all this painstaking work here, um, the differences in sample means between bag A and this top one here is bag B and then bag C. So this one represents the difference between bag A and bag C right here. And this is, I mean, sorry, that's the difference between bag A and bag B. And then this dot plot here is the difference between bag A and bag C. So bag A is always um, what we are comparing to, okay? And you see a very, very big difference, okay? And um, truly a, um, a sign that there is uh, definitely um, a good, good chance of there being different, a different array of numbers in bag A and bag C, uh, because you can see these large differences in sample means, you know, whereas uh, between A and B, the largest we got was around 5.4, okay, on the positive side, and um, a, uh, a 3, what, uh, just beyond 3.6 on this side, on the uh, negative side, whereas between A and C, um, the differences are larger, okay, but they're larger, um, and actually you can tell the, 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 the larger numbers most likely are going to be in bag A and B versus A C because you can see all of these differences, just about all these differences are on the positive side and they go, you know, up to probably what's that gonna be about um, you know, maybe seven point five, nearly eight over there on the positive side, and they just um, a tremendous number um, up here between five point four and 7.2. How many occurrences are there? 5, uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, like 16 occurrences, actually more than half of the sample mean differences between A and C are, um, are up here on this end, okay, this high end here. Okay, so there were some questions, I think, over here. Um, yeah, how do the centers of the, um, the class dot plots uh, for the difference in means um, compare. Um, well, if you look at the center, center here, we're looking probably um, right about, what about there? Is that about 15? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, yeah, about 15. I'm looking, up, I'm looking for like 15 on either side of, of, the, um, of the middle, and that's about right there. What's that about? So less than 1.8. A little bit less than 1.8, whereas here, like we had just said, more than half are over here. And that's that was 16, so um, we're looking at a, probably a, a middle point right there. Okay, um, 
So, and that's about, what, a little bit less than, you know, about 5, about 5, okay, 5.0. So you can see, um, this is about, what, 1.6 or so. You can see there's a tremendous difference between the differences. Um, we have, uh, yeah, and let's go ahead and see what else they're, what else they're asking back here. Um, so each bag has a population mean, okay, here we go, this is fun. Each bag has their population mean that is either 10.5 or 14.5. State what you think the population mean is for each bag. Boy, I just thought we had already understood all this already, what all these are. Well, it's pretty obvious if we go take a look here, over here, which of these two. Now that we've come to the quote-unquote conclusion, we have a, a good deal of evidence that, that A and B are the same. Um, and our sample um, mean what? Um, yeah, mean was for 15.4 and 16.2. I guess we could safely assume that 14.5 um, um, means were uh, bags A and B, and then C would be 10, 10.5 bag C. All right, because what do we have here for a sample? We had, what, 10.2 there. Very, very close. Okay, and that's just from a sample size of 10. I'm just I'm really shocked, actually, that, that those are so, so darn close. Okay. All right, well, I guess that's it. I might have forgotten. Uh, did I forget anything? Oh, no, I did not. Okay, so here we go. Closing. Um, Lesson summary here, remember to think about sampling variability, the chance of variability from sample to sample. Okay, um, again, it's not like we haven't talked about this yet, but uh, anyway, beware of making decisions based on just the fact that the two sample means are not equal. Okay, just because the means are not equal, um, you can't really come to any conclusion based on that because of the random nature of what we're doing. Um, consider the distribution of the difference in sample means when making a decision, okay? If those, if those difference in the sample means are very large, okay, then there, um, you have good, uh, well, some evidence at least that uh, they are very different, okay? Um, and again, that is what's going to be called soon enough for you in statistics, um, things such as variance or standard deviation, and um, they, have, um, they have calculations of their own that you are going to um, enjoy immensely. Okay, well, I um, hope you enjoyed this, and it wasn't, um, um, it wasn't uh, too long.